Fantastic. Robert, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, could you talk to us a little bit about the cenotaph that's to your right? I believe there's been some further additions to the piece, and uh, I hear there was quite a lot of work that went into it. Well, let me start by saying it's been an, a great pleasure to have the cenotaph here in Rockland, and every year we have gathered as a legion with the community to remember those who have died fighting in both wars, as well as the, Afghan, um, the Korean War and the Afghan War. But a year ago when I was here, we were doing the ceremony and it dawned on me as we were doing that, we never did an honor roll. And that is something that has been traditional in other cenotaphs. So I went back to the Legion after the year and I said, you know, we really should be calling out the names of those who have served and died. And when I came to the cenotaph to look at the names, I was shocked to find out that there weren't any names listed for the First World War. So checking with the history records of both City Hall and of uh, Gilles Chartrand at the Rockland Museum, we came up empty. And I was really surprised because, of course, Great War brought many deaths. So I reached out to a friend of mine, Denise Beaton, who is a wonderful community-minded volunteer who does a lot of ancestry work. And she agreed that she would help on the project. And she started going through Ancestry.ca and she came up with five men from Rockland who had served in the First World War and died in action. And the very first name she came up was Beaton and turned out to be a relative or a husband. And they had no idea. So that inspired her to do more work and coming up with the five names that we've mentioned already. And then we approached the Brunei Funeral Home for their assistance and generosity in carving those names into the cenotaph. So we now have them etched in stone. That's fantastic. And it's so good to have them here for the 2020 Remembrance Day as well. Albeit it's going to be, as we heard from Councillor Grumara, a slightly different one this year. Uh, I do hear that there is another addition for Remembrance Day in the form of a new banner though. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Where did the inspiration for that come from? So it was a carry-on idea to uh, create the banners. We looked at the 39 to 45 Second World War names and there are nine listed here and we realized we had the opportunity not just to call out the names once a year and Remembrance Day, but we could lift those names up on banners. And when we discovered that we had five from the World War I names, then it became imperative for us to seek a project that would put 14 banners along the street on these posts along Laurier running from the corner of Giant Tiger right down to the fire hall. And it gave us the opportunity to remember these people uh, in a way that if you didn't attend the service this year, because as we were saying, it's a virtual service, the moment that you drive by, you will have the uh, opportunity to reflect upon the names, the family names of those who serve for our country. We're very pleased to have designed these banners in two formats, one for World War I and the second for World War II. They will be distinctively different, and yet they will... Uh, carried the same themes of both wars, uh, showing the sacrifices the men made on Canada's behalf. And you say there, especially for those that are, un are unable to attend, can at least witness these names in that way. When are the banners due to be put up? The banners will be raised on the 30th of um, October, which is the kickoff for our poppy campaign, and they will remain up till November 15th. Wonderful, Robert. Thank you so much for joining us here at TVC22 today and all the best. Thank you.